join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for joining us here on this Friday edition of Bible Tract Echoes. I have my Bible open for this last time this week to Psalm 25, and I encourage you to go there with me if that's possible for you to do. I'm going to give you in a moment the three means of being in contact with us. I hope that you will take one of them because I really would like to give you, our staff would like to give you a, a, a sample packet of all of our tracks because you do realize that Bible Tract Echoes is not all that we do. It is the radio arm. We've been doing radio since 1958, but since 1938, We've been printing good gospel tracts, and that is the very backbone of our ministry. We are here to produce good, reliable, uh, Word of God-filled, Word of God-impacted gospel tracts. We are here to help God's servants literally around the world as we print tracts in many different languages so that we can help in the process of seeing lost people reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what a delight it is to be the director of this ministry. And my friend, I would want to encourage you and stir your own heart to be a user of gospel tracts. Whether you have a chance when you meet somebody to go and march your way through verbally and give them the plan of salvation one by one, I do think that is the best way why people come to Christ, more people. But Sometimes we can't do that, can we? Sometimes it's a partial presentation or no presentation at all. And so we can use a track to follow up, complete, or sometimes be our silent gospel witness. And my friend, I cannot tell you the number of letters and signed tracks we get back where people have signed the track and said they have prayed the prayer to receive Jesus Christ. We have no clue who the person is, more often than not, that gave them that track. But I do know this, the Spirit of God takes the Word of God, brings conviction and salvation, and to God be the glory, amen and amen. Eh? Now listen, we want to put gospel tracks into your hands. We're going to give you three ways to contact us. We print tracks for free, so we're going to give these to you for free as well, a free sample packet. At the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken, our announcer, is going to be giving you the mailing address. I'm about ready to give to you a, a telephone number and a website address. Whatever way works for you, please put it to practice. Put it into work, all right? Now, the telephone number here for Bible Tract Echoes is area code 309-828-6888. One more time, the telephone number, 309-828-6888. Or you can contact us using our website. You can go to www.bibletracksinc.org. Inc. is I-N-C, short for incorporated. One more time, the uh, uh, website address for Bible Tracks is www.bibletracksinc.org. Okay. Great. I will remind you that starting on Monday, uh, this coming Monday, we'll begin a study in the Gospel of Matthew. We will walk through uh, paragraph by paragraph, showing how the flow of uh, the Gospel of Matthew has been put together by the Spirit of God, show the highlights that are there, show the thrust of the book, and uh, we've got a chance to preach the Gospel through the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, we'll deepen our understanding uh, of who Christ is as the uh, as the Messiah, as the King of the Jews, and he needs to be King of our lives. We need to be able to sing more readily, King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be as a result of spending time in Matthew. But that's where we're going to be on Monday, uh, Lord willing. If the rapture happens between now and then, uh, trust me, you'll have Matthew taught to you by Matthew up in glory. He'll do a better job than I. But until then, let's uh, be found faithful doing the business of uh, the gospel and sharing the gospel, sharing the word of God. Now, in Ma in the, the book of the Psalms, Psalm 25, we have been here. Uh, this is the fourth day. We've talked about the fact that we've been directing this psalm at people who are involved in teaching the word of God. I come back and uh, I begin reading at verse 8 again in Psalm 25. 
Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that feareth him. He will show him his covenant. Thine, mine eye will, will, did, are ever toward the Lord. He shall pluck my feet out of the net. That is a center section of the three key sections of this psalm. We find in here, we've said earlier in the week, that God is a teacher. And the if you're going to be, if I'm going to be a teacher of the Word of God, a teacher about God, that before we can be a teacher, we must be one that has been taught. Uh, I was wanting to say we, before we're a teacher, we must be a TG, but that's not a very good English, is it? Now listen, before you and I can, can communicate the, the truth of God and the person of God to somebody else, God himself must be the one teaching and communicating himself to us. Praise the Lord for the indwelling Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. Now, as we began to mark through here, we began to talk about the character trait of piety that a teacher needs. We talked about how we get started by letting God teach us. We talked about how we dare uh, even become a teacher, think about being a teacher, the, the character traits that are necessary to be a teacher. We began talking yesterday about the mutual benefits. We're going to come back and finish those up today. The mutual benefits for both the teacher and the student when the Word of God is taught. Yesterday, we began to make a list. I have six in all from Psalm 25. We've gotten down through uh, the first uh, three of these. Let me repeat the first three. We're told in verse 2 and 3 that one of the benefits is that we will not be ashamed. I said this is the goal of this psalm, I think, based upon the fact that he says in verses 2 and 3, he did not want to be ashamed. And over almost to the end of the psalm, verse 20, he repeats, I don't want to be ashamed. I think the goal of communicating the word of God is that we will not be ashamed before him at his coming. They will not have shame. My friend, you, you and I as believers, we're going to stand and give an account at the Bema seat, at the judgment seat of Christ. Our works are going to be evaluated some of us are going to be able to have uh, rewards, gold, silver, and precious stones. Some of us are going to have our, our efforts burned up because it's nothing more than wood, hay, and stubble. We are going to take all the crowns that we do earn. We're going to eventually cast them at the feet of Christ, who is the one that enabled us to earn them in the first place, and they were done for his glory. Some of the things that we think are done for his glory are done really for uh, people to pat ourselves on the back, and those things are just nothing more than wood, hay, and stubble. Now listen, we will be evaluated, and I think that Mark Smith's going to be ashamed of the things I could have done if I would have just served him more, uh, served him um, with times that I was just kind of goofing off, and, and rather than serving God, I was just kind of making my life happy for me. My friend, there's a necessity for us to deal with practical life situations that we need for our lives and our family, but sometimes we, instead of serving the Lord, we're doing things that are really quite selfish. Sometimes there are times I've told God, no, I don't want to serve you. And boy, I'm going to suffer loss there. I'm going to have plenty to be ashamed about, but I don't want any more than that. Do you? Listen, we need not be ashamed. I, I did not need to re-preach that point, did I? Second thing we said yesterday, that there are tender mercies and the loving kindness of God we will begin to know about. Thirdly, forgiveness of sin. The, the extent, the greatness of how much God has forgiven us. The wealth of the forgiveness of God, according to verse 7. But notice, notice in verse 14, for those who teach and those who are taught, verse 14 says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. He will show them his covenant. You and I, if you and I are teachers and we are listeners, we will have the knowledge of the secrets of God. God just reveals his secrets to those who seek them out. If we allow the word of God to abide in us, fruit is produced, according to John 15, but God reveals his secrets to those who seek them out. Are you a searcher of God? Do you look for the truths of God that are laying kind of like nuggets of gold on the top of the ground? Great. But what about those we have to do a little hard work in mind for? They're worth going after. There are secret things that God reveals to those whose hearts are searching after them. Are you? Do you thirst after the secrets of God? Like David said, his heart panted after God. Do you want to know the secret things of God? Those do not come quickly, but they come as we are study the Word of God teach the Word of God and are taught the Word of God. Listen, 
Look at verse 1. There's freedom in prayer. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. My friend, you ever tried to pray when you knew things were not right with you and God? But when you've just discovered some new truth from God, from the Word of God, your soul is encouraged, it is lifted up, and your and your heart turns to heavenward and say, oh, Lord, thank you. I needed it. Thank you for showing me this truth. Help me to implement it. Help me to share it with somebody else. My friend, there's freedom in prayer. Lastly, integrity. Verse 21, let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait on thee. We started this whole psalm by talking about piety. My friend, part of piety is that there is integrity and uprightness in us. My friend, my friend, let me ask these questions. Do these benefits appeal to you? Do you want to have the idea of having a greater sense of forgiveness? Does that appeal to you? Do you want to understand more the loving kindness and mercy of God? Does that appeal to you? Do you need integrity? Do you want a higher level of integrity? Does that appeal to you? If none of that appeals to you, probably you're dead in trespasses and sins. Or you're so far away from God as a child of God that you people don't even recognize you as a child of God. If those things appeal to you, though, you have to run to the Spirit of God, run to the Word of God and say, help me, teach me, slow by slow, Line upon line, precept upon precept, know the word of God. My friend, I have been dealing with Psalm 25. Could I just kind of bring this Psalm 25 to a culmination point by, by confronting us with these things? First of all, it is the desire of God to open our eyes to his truth. He wants to reveal truth to us. I remember as a child, when I was taught about communion, I had, I was, I had a false idea. I was, uh, I, now, we did communion the right way, but I was afraid to take communion. Now, there are times when some people ought to be afraid, but nobody ever told me that God wants me to take communion. He longs for me, my heart to be right and take communion. He longs for fellowship. Oh, when I learned that truth, oh, that transformed my desire to meet with uh, God's people around the communion table of my local church. But you know what? God desires to open our eyes. He wants to teach us truths more than we want to know them. Oh, he aches to teach you a truth. Have you been to the Word of God recently? Have you, do you spend time in it daily? Do you begin your prayer time? Do you begin your Bible study time by saying, Lord, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things out of thy law? If you don't do that, God Almighty, your Heavenly Father, desires to open the Word of God to you. He gave you the indwelling Spirit of God. For that's one of the key purposes. Secondly, the signal that God has been teaching us and has revealed truth to us is that we will sense a greater need for pardon before God. Remember Isaiah? Isaiah saw the Lord. He had truth about God revealed to him. This truth caused him to say, oh, I'm a man of unclean lips. and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. When God reveals truth to us, it'll humble us. It'll say, Lord, I need greater pardon. Now, the pardon of Christ through the shed blood is complete enough, but we'll understand ourselves more uh, more effectively and how great the forgiveness is that God has done and how willing God is to his loving kindness. My friend, as you and I go to the Word of God and are taught and teach others, you'll have insights in the personal practice of prayer for mercy, verse 16, acknowledging our distress to God, asking for forgiveness, as well as telling God our needs. Oh, my friend, be a student of God's Word. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.